What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new, my name is Dave. This is my 2004 C5 Corvette. So if you're in the Corvette content, especially C5 content, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Now in my previous video, I replaced the front wheel studs on my C5 here. They were nice and easy. Check that video out uh, if you need to do that yourself. The reason why I had to do it is I put spacers on last year and when I did that, I had to cut the studs, but now I got new wheels coming in and I had to put full length studs back in. So today's video is replacing the rear ones, not nearly as simple as the front. For the rear, we have to take the uh, rear bearing out of the car in order to change the studs out. So without further ado, let's get into removing all the different components just to get the bearing out. All right, so first thing that we need to do is take off the rotor and the brake caliper and the brake bracket. Uh, just to get more space so I can fit my impact in here, I'm going to get the tie rod out of the way first. Just going to zip this off. This is an 18 millimeter. All right. And that, if that doesn't drop out, just put this nut back on for a little bit. And then just give it a little whack. I don't have my hammer's on the other side of the car, so I'm just going to do that. tie rod out of the way put that back on there and now I can rotate this in order to get the 21 millimeter bolts off the brake bracket those undone I'm gonna put the caliper and the bracket up here out of the way so now we can remove our rotor make sure you break it off so from here now I'm going to release the top ball joint uh, there's a nut on here that's held on with an 18 millimeter nut and then also a in the center of the nut is a five millimeter Allen um, that you're gonna need to hold on to you need some type of box wrench to get in here just because there is no clearance with a normal socket so I'm going to get into removing that now. Now I have already started it, so obviously it's not this easy to get it done. You do have to break it free and you will fight it a little bit, but not terrible. So now with this nut out of the way, all right, so now with that nut out of the way, you're going to have to get one of these ball joint pullers. I got this from Harbor Freight. It was like 10 bucks. Uh, but when I did the passenger side, all I actually had to do was just raise, put a jack underneath the suspension here and just jack this up and, and it popped free. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll see if it pops free. If not, I'll have to get this on there. So there you go. You see that it popped free again for this side, which is awesome. Um, but if it doesn't, again, you're going to have to uh, use this separator tool in order to get that out. Now, this could have been done at any step. I'm going to disconnect the wheel speed sensor here. There's a little um, piece that you just lift up on the underside with that tab, and you can disconnect that. And then we're going to have to disconnect the e-brake as well. There's two 15-millimeter bolts on the back here. And then a little, um, I don't know what you call it, but the little wire here that holds on to the e-brake. So you just undo those two 15 millimeter bolts and disconnect the e-brake and just set that off to the side. All right, so now with the e-brake disconnected and just hanging off here to the side, now we can go ahead and take off the axle nut. This is a 33 millimeter axle nut. Get that on there. I'm using a Hilti half inch drive impact to get this off and you just zip this off until it comes off. So now with the axle nut out of the way, I'm just gonna lower my scissor jack here. I'm using a scissor jack only because my uh, regular floor jack uh, decided to call it quits. So I'm using the scissor jack from my truck. 
out of the lifting, but not that big a deal. Here's what you got. I know I had to spray this axle with some WD-40. I had to put the nut back on the end of it and just hit it with a hammer in order to free it out of the hub here. And then once you get it back far enough, you may or may not have to do that. Uh, I did. Uh, if you look at it, it is uh, pretty rusty looking. So uh, probably has something to do with the car being up here in the northeast. All right, after wrestling with the axle for a little bit, finally got that free out of the hub. Now you need to get the lower ball joint off here. This is a 21 millimeter nut. I'm just going to zip it with my impact again. And hopefully that should, that should do it. So I was able to get the nut off uh, majority of the way. But I'm going to have to come in here. Uh, six millimeter Allen on top of a bolt. And I don't have a 21 millimeter um, socket or wrench. So I'm just going to... Um, use this adjustable in order to do this. So again, once that's free, um, you're going to need a ball joint separator on here. Again, this is what I got from Harbor Freight. I didn't have to add much pressure to this when I did the passenger side. So, loosen this a little bit. This is going to sit on top of the bolt, hopefully, there we go, and on the bottom of the knuckle here, just like so, start to wrench this up, now I'm doing this by hand, and I see it moving already. So I probably don't need to get a wrench on this. Here we go. It freed it up enough. And there you go. Now your, I think this is your knuckle, right? This is all removed. So now we have to get the bearing out of here, which is held in by these three T55 Torx bolts that are really friggin' in there. Um, I think they're torqued like 150 foot pounds. So again, I'm going to be using an impact to get those off. Alright guys, so again, took those three T55 torques out, used my impact here, did wonders. So now you're going to have to come in here, just pop off this little bracket here that's holding this on. There we go. Alright, so now with that off, take the knuckle off, slide your heat brake off put that off to the side all right so now here's your bearing and you finally have access to go forward and knock the old studs through the back and pull your new studs in you do want to be a little gentle because you are hammering on a bearing I, I get that um so just take your time don't wail away on this thing and uh you'll be okay All right, so there's your five wheel studs out. Now we can go ahead and put the new ones in. Now I'm gonna be using the assistance of my wheel spacer to um, put these new wheel studs in. I'm gonna push them up through here and then just thread these in in order for me to pull these new studs all the way in. Could do it this way. If you don't have the wheel spacer, you're just gonna to have to use a series of washers in order to build up enough so they can use a lug nut in order to sit these on. All right, so now with all the wheel studs pressed on there, now it's just time to reverse the process on everything that we did. So we're gonna put the e-brake back on here, line up all those holes, they all line up, and then go ahead, put this back on, just like so. Again, all the holes will line up. They don't you just have to rotate everything? My my whole shift is on here. There we go. And then you can just go ahead, start these bolts again. We're gonna put this back on here, but I'm just gonna wait. 
stick these on and I'll go from there. Guys, and then these three bolts are just torqued to 150 foot pounds. I'm just gonna zip them on really quick with the impact and then I'll get the torque wrench out. But 150 foot pounds, or 151 actually. Um, I only have a 150 pound torque wrench, so you wanna go to 150 foot pounds. All right guys, now with this all assembled, it's just time to reverse the process and put this all back in the car. All right, so first I'm gonna put the knuckle back on the lower control arm here. Again, put this 21 millimeter bolt back on here, or nut, sorry. And I am going to zip this on again with my impact. So now that's on, I'm gonna bring the axle, put the axle back in here. Now the axle is coming through. I'm going to raise the suspension up just a little bit to put the top ball joint onto the upper control arm. Sorry, so that's in, so then I'm going to lower it back down. So now I'm going to start the nut back on the bolt for the upper control arm. You can lower the suspension to aid in tightening this. be a torque spec to this I don't know what it is but that's about how tight it was when I took it off so that's what we're going with now we just need to put the e-brake cable back on here again there were two 15 millimeter bolts that attached this to the back all right so now with the e-brake cable all attached uh, don't forget to connect your wheel speed sensor Go ahead and push our motor back on. Go ahead and also now put our uh, brake bracket back on and caliper, and then we'll put the tie rod on and we'll be done. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this project. Obviously, the rear studs was a lot harder than doing the front studs, as you can see from the dirt on my hands. Now, obviously, if I can go back in time, I would not have put wheel spacers on where I needed to cut the studs. Um, for the front and the rear you know because obviously here i am now a year later and i'm putting new wheels on but again not a terrible project to do if you do have to replace your wheel bearings uh, you might as well do that while you're doing this as well so if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so already guys please subscribe thank you and have a great day and don't forget to do one thing that i almost forgot to do and that is put the rear axle nut on so i'm going to zip this on but have a good day guys and i'll catch you in the next video and for those that stick it out to the end here is a little preview of the new wheels dude loving how these are coming out or how they came out uh, you know they're pretty much done i just need to do a few things and this whole thing will be buttoned up